Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Today we'll be upgrading our Acer A515-44 laptop. This is a mid-range laptop. It's got a pretty powerful AMD Ryzen 5 mobile processor, 4500U with Radeon graphics. It's a 7 nanometer processor, but unfortunately this laptop comes with only 8 gigabytes of pre-bundled RAM, which I want to upgrade to more RAM because I don't think this is enough. As you can see, it only has 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. It is a pretty good memory, it's a DDR4-3200, pretty fast memory, it's coming from Micron and it has two modules, 4GB each and one of the things with this laptop, it only has one memory slot. The other memory is soldered straight to the motherboard, so you won't be able to replace it and if you want to expand your memory, you're only going to be able to replace only one stick of memory. So we're going to have to mix and match different size of memory, but this is the only way you can expand the memory because you cannot do anything with a solder memory. But anyway, let's go ahead and do a quick test to see how fast this memory is. And then we're going to do another test once we upgrade our memory and see what difference we're going to get. So I'm going to be using the AIDA64 program and we're going to be testing memory read, write, copy and latency test. Because this test takes substantial amount of time, I'm just going to fast forward it so you don't have to wait for very long. And then I'm just going to put them all in one table so you can see the results. All right, so here are the results. The results are pretty good, actually. The memory is working in a dual mode and the read speed is 28,217 megabyte per second. The write speed is 30,212 megabyte per second. The copy speed is 27,459 megabyte per second. And the latency is 111.1 nanosecond. So the results are pretty good. They're not the best results you can get from the DDR4 memory. For example, if the memory would be working in a single mode, you will probably be getting half of the speed. But anyway, these are the results. Let's go ahead and disassemble the laptop, install the new memory and check out how it's going to be working. On this laptop, we got 11 screws. But before we start disassembling and taking the back cover off, you want to make sure you disable the battery. As you can see, there is a little battery sign here. This little pinhole is going to allow you to disable the battery, which will make it safer for us to disassemble the laptop. So for that you need like a SIM card ejection pin or any kind of small pin that is going to fit into that little hole. So all you need to do is just put it in there like this. Just press it once. You can feel it when you press it, it's just going to press in. And once we pressed on that pin, the battery has been disconnected, which means there is no power going to the laptop anymore. And of course, we have disconnected it from the power outlet itself. And we also have disconnected all the peripherals, all the cables, like any USB adapters, any Bluetooth adapters, anything that might be in the way. Make sure there is absolutely nothing connected. Let's get started and undo the screws. I like to use something like this, something like small pry bar or I got some tools like this. Any of these would work, you just got to find the one that works the best. You can also use a thin guitar pick to just kind of fit it at the edge here and get to that groove. Just find the spot where it kind of opens up. There's going to be some plastic clips all around it so make sure to just go slowly and start breaking loose one after one and then it should come out. Let's just try it right now. We got the front and the side parts already off and now it just comes off like this. There we go. So it comes off really really easy not as difficult as on Lenovo laptop and let's see what we got here so as you can see we got our M2 NVMe SSD here we got one module of RAM one slot available and the other slot is probably just soldered on the motherboard and there is no second slot this is why the second slot in the CPU Z application was shown like it's not there 
Let's have a look at this module. Let's just pull it out. So this is the only memory module available on this motherboard and it's a Micron 4 gigabyte 3200 single rank and the rest 4 gigabyte is probably just soldered on the motherboard and I'm gonna replace it with the 8 gigabyte which will give me 12 gigabyte available okay so I'm gonna replace it with this memory module this is a Samsung 8 gigabyte 3200 single rank and it came out from my Lenovo laptop because I have upgraded the Lenovo laptop with 32 gigs, so I have pulled out this 8 gigabyte RAM stick and I'm gonna upgrade this laptop which only has 8 gigabyte altogether. So with this memory module, it should have 12 gigabyte, which is gonna be better. Let's put it in. And because it says altogether there was two memory modules, the other one that is soldered on the motherboard. It's probably located on the other side, that's why we don't see it on this side. And also what I wanted to show you guys, look at how much free space you get in, in these really cheap budget laptops. Like, here is the battery, here is how much more room you have, so you could easily put like a 100 watt hour battery here, or at least 99.9 .9 watt hour battery. Then look at the size of this motherboard, like it's so small, like it just, tiny motherboard there is all this space here is absolutely free there is only one m2 nvme ssd while you could at least have like a connector for the sata ssd this way you could have an extra storage installed in this laptop or you could easily add another m2 ssd here but they have decided this is going to be too much they decided to just leave it all empty all right let's go ahead and put it together and test it I'm just gonna throw this cover quickly on and turn it on and see how it's gonna work. All right, so let's first go ahead and start the CPU Z program and see if the memory has been successfully recognized by the motherboard and that we have 12 gigabyte of memory. All right, let's go to the memory first. And as you can see there, DDR4 12 gigabyte, let's go to the SPD section. And the first slot is showing us we have a DDR4 3200 8 gigabyte module size and this is the samsung module just like i showed you that i was installing so that's great everything's working everything is compatible now we have 12 gigabyte available let's go ahead and do some memory test and see what speed we're gonna get and if we're gonna get any increase or decrease in speed all right let's go ahead and run this test again with aida 64 and like before i'm just gonna fast forward it and I'm gonna put all the results in one table and then we can compare the results from the previous test with the new test. Okay, there we go, so the results are ready and let's go quickly through these results and see what we got. Well, first of all, I'd like to explain how to read this table properly. As you can see I, in the first column, I got the eight gigabyte results. This was done in the dual mode with two four gigabyte memory modules. The second column has a 12 gigabyte, which has one eight gigabyte module that we have installed and the four gigabyte module that is soldered on the motherboard. And as you can see for the difference, we're getting 4% more in the read speed. It goes from 2800 to 117 megabyte per second with two four gigabyte modules to 29,343 megabyte per second with 12 gigabyte memory. So, so we're getting 4% increase in the read speed from eight gigabyte to 12 gigabyte. Then in the right speed, we're getting slightly lower results. We're getting approximately 6.6% less in the right speed test results with a 12 gigabyte versus 8 gigabyte. Then again, in the copy speed result, we're getting 5% less speed with a 12 gigabyte versus 8 gigabyte. The latency is a little bit different because latency, the lower the better. This way, the increase in latency is actually marked in red because it's worth to have higher results than the lower results. And we're getting about 6.8% more latency. 12 gigabyte versus 8 gigabyte and then concerning the mode i have put an asterisk besides the dual mode for the 12 gigabyte because it is not a true dual mode it is limited due to the different memory module size what it means is if you have two ram sticks with different amount of memory in each stick for example you have four and eight only four gigabyte of the eight gigabyte stick will be able 
to run in the dual mode because the other module is only four gigabyte altogether. So this is what's limiting the dual mode operation. So as you can see from the results, we're getting pretty good results. You're getting four gigabyte more in volume for the memory. You also get in a little bit higher read speed, but you get in a slightly less write and copy speed and latency as well. But five to 10% is you're not gonna be able to really notice it as much. Unless you run this benchmark test, you're not gonna be able to see much difference if you run any programs so i don't think it really matters like for example in my other video where i was testing dual mode versus single mode in my lenovo illusion 5 laptop that was a really big change because i was getting approximately 50 percent less speed going from a dual mode to the single mode and this is a big change this change you would be able to notice because you're getting 50 percent less speed so yeah having five to ten percent this is not gonna be a big change but i'm really happy that i get more volume now because 8 gigabyte was not enough for this laptop and as you know eventually programs start to use more and more ram like five years ago the browser wasn't using that much ram now you open up one browser and it's already using like one gigabyte of ram if you open another window it's going to be one and a half gigabyte or something like that so having eight gigabyte in your laptop will probably run your memory at about 80 percent all the time without even opening many apps. And if you're planning to use it for like Photoshop or video editing software or any 3D software, then you're gonna run out of that memory in a blink of an eye. So this is gonna be real quick. So yeah, what do I think about these results? I'm happy with these results. And I think that having more volume will be more of benefit to me than having a little bit higher read and write speed. But this is only my opinion. Let me know guys in the comment section below what you think about these test results. And if you have such laptop that only has one memory module available and the other one is soldered on the motherboard, what would you suggest to do? Would you rather leave it like it is and have faster memory or would you like to expand it and have a slightly slower memory? That would be interesting to know. But this is it for now guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please support it with your like. If you're new to the channel, please take a second to subscribe. You can also go ahead and check out my other video where I have upgraded my laptop to 64 gigabyte of RAM. Do you think that's overkill? Well, you're going to find that out in my next video. So make sure to watch that video and I hope you like it. I appreciate it very much and I hope you guys have a nice day. See you soon. Bye-bye.